Ashley Webster is here, Elizabeth McDonald is here, David Dietz also, and Ryan Payne we will. <coughs> Ryan, to you first. Profit reports coming out, supposed to be very, very good. Is that enough to give us a second leg up for the market? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what we saw in January, that big melt-up, I will be prepared for a bigger melt-up later on. So sitting in cash is probably one of the most foolish things you could possibly do right now. You're super bullish, aren't you? I am like a raging bull right now. You don't care about trade or crises abroad, nothing like that? You have to stick to the fundamentals. Earnings are getting better. Stocks slave their earnings. Unemployment's at 4%. I mean, this is like... As good as it gets. Okay, with an answer like that, I have to turn to David D. See yeah. what answer I get there. So I'm a long term bull too, but the best kept <laughs> secret out here is their earnings first quarter will be up 17%. Everyone knows that. So you have to ask what's already reflected in stock prices. Second, Earnings are a backward-looking indicator. Everyone's going to want to know what are companies saying is going to come forward. And to the extent that they get a little nervous because of what's going on, trade wars, geopolitical developments, that could inject some caution in investors' reaction. And what about if right. the Democrats take the House and all of a sudden the president's pro-growth, pro-business agenda gets you know, stopped dead in its tracks in the House? Yeah, what about that, Ryan Payne? Well, I think the forces of synchronized global growth around the world are going to exceed anything that happens on Capitol Hill. As Warren Buffett once said, I never delayed a business decision because of what's happening you know, down in Washington. Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, we're listening. Hey. Huh. And the Dow is up 180 points. Now, look at the price of oil. <laughs> it was yesterday at its highest level in four years, 67 a barrel. Now it's come back to 66. But that still means, surely, higher gas prices yeah. this summer. David, is that going to be a problem? I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. You know, it's just a couple of years ago, we were, about, we were worried about $5 a gallon at the pump. We've got some of the lowest unemployment figures in years. Sentiment it is strong. I think that people will still take their trips and um, higher gas prices is not their biggest financial concern today. Okay, we're all having oh. very positive feelings this morning, yeah. aren't we? Right. The current it. average, by the <laughs> way, to, for regular nationwide, 267. That's going up. Don't forget Facebook. Who could? Two days of testimony by Zuck in front of Congress. I say he won. Not going to be any regulation in the near future. And sometimes he obviously knew far more about the subject than those people asking the questions. <laughs> so I say, I say he won. The stock's at 165. What do you make of that, Ryan? Um, yeah, I think the stock definitely bottomed out around like 159, 160. And if you look at forward earnings on that at 20 21 times, it's not exactly cheap. But given what we're in a growth engine type market... Definitely a great buy here and definitely going higher. You'd be buying it at 165. I absolutely would. The yeah. voice of reason is Elizabeth. Yeah, I, well, I don't think Congress laid a glove on him, but it is kind of right. creepy and weird that you're made to feel like you have to get blockchain encryption so Facebook doesn't stalk you around the Internet yeah. for your own computer. It, it was interesting. Facebook's Zuckerberg did say we may need to hire 15,000 people to review mm -hmm. content. That'll hit the bottom line. And then it made me think, really, the government really does create jobs if it's forcing Facebook to do things like that. <laughs> a nice backdoor. <laughs> Right. There's a very well done. Now, I should draw your attention to the market because we're now up over 200 points. We're back above 24,400, up 222 as we speak. Going up. BlackRock, that is the world's largest asset manager, is making good money. It's up 1.6%. Sort of a tepid sort of gain there. Mm. But going the other way is Bed Bath & Beyond. Who would have thought? They were wonderful stores uh -huh. maybe 10 years ago. But they gave weak guidance, as they say. Gave weak guidance. <laughs> uh, now the stock is getting a 20% yeah. off coupon. That's good. <laughs> very good, Justin. Very good, very good, very good. Uh, it's down 17%. No laughing matter there. No. 17 bucks on Bed Bath & Beyond. Apple, they've cut manufacturing orders for the HomePod. I think they're just going to discontinue it. Is that yeah, right? It's, well, it seems that way. They cut it down to 200000 a month. That's more than half of the 500000 they were thinking. It's too expensive. It it's, costs $200 more than the average price for home speakers on the market. It's too limited in function. It can't use the Apple HomePod for other things. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to use iTunes and HomePod. Yeah, I but mean, it's this is supposed to be the new revolutionary yeah. thing in home computing. And they're discontinuing. Well, yeah, because they were late to the game. They were late to the game, and they charged three times. Yeah, they missed the Christmas. They missed the Christmas season. Yeah. Well, we're down on Apple, aren't we? Well, listen to this. Listen to this one. Apple Music. They've surpassed 40 million subscribers. All of them pay 10 bucks a month. Spotify has 71 million subscribers. They pay 10 bucks a month. 
Ryan, <laughs> is your money on Spotify or Apple Music? Hands down, Spotify. Um, hands down. First off, it's, it's a technology play. Let's face it, Apple already has the users that they can bring over to the new platform. That's easy. But organic growth, you have 159 million users. Um, it's, I think, would you say, 59 million that actually... Uh, We're talking about Spotify? Yeah. Spotify, it's 71 yes. million paid pay, dollars a month. Paid yeah. No, 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 exactly. not all of those are paid subscribers. So 159 million in a universe. A lot of those are converting to paid subscribers, and they're going to grow out their user base like 30% this year, and the technology is awesome. It's a great combination. So you'd buy Spotify. You like it. Raging one, Bull again. 150. 150, yeah. absolutely. But Raging they're up against... They're yeah. money, Raging you know. Bull. Raging Bull. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that's... <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. okay. Okay. They're What's up against problem? some fierce competitors. The problem for Spotify is they must make money with music, which is a tough business. But you're up against Apple. You're up against Amazon. They can use music as a lost leader. They can give it away in order to further other parts of the business. That scares mm. me when you're paying that kind of valuation for but a company. If the product's not as good, you know, it doesn't really matter. And right now, if you think about it from a superior standpoint, their technology is the best. Okay. I've got to move on to GE. I don't think you're a raging bull on GE. I just I know you're not. You can't be. I just can't be. But you are. Yes, yes, I am. Look, for example, to start with sales. You know, if GE stock price had the same price to sales multiple as competitors like 3M, it'd be three times as much. Um, they have more sales than Microsoft, more sales than Cisco. I think the fact that they're a conglomerate makes them difficult to understand. They're looking at ways to unlock value, and they, it's the nice thing is they have these options to do various spin offs. The sum of the parts worth much more than the current whole stick with GE. You know why we cover it every single wow. day? Because it's a fallen giant and yeah. because it's down so far that if you bought it as a day trader and you trade for a 50 cent gain, yep. you make a significant percentage sure. in a very limited amount of time. Right. And if you can yeah. trade through a discount broker, and we all do, for five bucks a trade, yep. it's very easy to make money on the ups and downs of GE. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why we play it so much. Hmm. Then we have Netflix. It's around 300 bucks a share at the moment, 309 to be precise. Listen to this. Goldman Sachs, no less, thinks it's going to 360. Uh, the company reports profits uh, next Monday, by the way. Now, do we have another raging bull stock for our, our guy here? I have to dial it back a little bit. I, I think <laughs> it's 359. <laughs> 359 on the dot. No, I, think, <laughs> I think the bottom line there is it trades at such a high multiple mm. that it's priced to perfection. And really, for them, the pressure is on continually bringing out great content. And you have a lot of different players in the space. So I'm a little more suspect that it can go that high. So I would be a little less <laughs> bullish a tepid on Netflix. And Disney is, yeah, yeah, is rare. Tepid. Tepid. Rare. Disney is leaving the platform. And Netflix is going to find out you can't just yes. throw billions and create blockbusters. It's going to be very difficult. All right, great. calm down, everybody, when it comes to Netflix. Okay. <laughs> Bank of America will no longer lend to companies that make military-style weapons. Now, this is a kind of boycott from the well, banking Yeah, it's industry. interesting. And, it and Wells Fargo is taking the other tack. Yes, they're yes. saying they're going to continue to lend. They're the top lender uh, to uh, – Wells Fargo is the top lender to the, the uh, gun industry. Uh, but the, it's the AR-15 that the Bank of America officials are worried about, the military assaults type gun. Well, this is business's response to the gun control movement, right. isn't it? Yeah, they're it's a it. response to pressure. They're part of it. Okay. Right. But they're responding no. to shareholders, which ultimately they owe their allegiance to. And right now it is trendy to be anti-gun, and that's <clears> going to curry more favor with the public than to be pro-gun. No, they're, 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 not anti, they're, they're anti a certain type of gun, the military yeah. assault style gun. That's that's Me Bank of America saying. Me yeah. thinks cavil on a hair. No, it's not yeah. on a hair. That's <laughs> important distinction. Yeah. I just love how Wells <laughs> Sorry, Fargo loves the right. evil empire. They just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the the so press is bad, and they're like, you know what, we'll just continue to tout what's unpopular. Yeah, yeah. the stock is meandering <laughs> around $53 a share. Well. <laughs> you know what? It's that time. It's oh, 9.40. No. No. Yeah, it's that no. time. I've got to say goodbye to super raging bull. <laughs> right, yeah? And a little less, less raging bull, David D. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with thank us. Thank you.